Thank you, Chanel, for having us. I'm just so excited to be here. This is my first time moderating. So, you know, we like to wear different hats in all forms of the expression. You know, Masters NYC, before it became a club, it started with just simply hat production from, you know, our time abroad. I'm happy to have Sean here. Appreciate happy to have Duke here. Appreciate happy you. to have Rick Appreciate here. Appreciate you already know my brother. So welcome to the club, guys, as you already know, if you didn't know. Thank you, Chanel. And with that being said, before we hop into the film, I just wanted to know two questions. What was the inspiration behind this film? Yeah. Um, I would say I was really inspired just by my community. Um, growing up in Harlem, you see a lot about you see a lot of light feet dancers. I mean, there was a period in Harlem where light feet dancer was the alternative for all the kids. Mm. Um, you know, so many times you see the glorification of like the violence in films. Um, they kind of try to say Harlem is kind of, you know, distraught and, you know, even beyond, you know, the gentrification, exactly. they try to say Harlem is this or this is what it used to be like. But, um, but there definitely was a period, I can say, when I was growing up of like the light feet culture and that whole wave um, where a lot of kids weren't involved in a lot of violence. And there was a point where kids were dancing. Um, you know, a lot of these, you know, unfortunately, a lot of these dance teams unfortunately converted over to gangs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But there was a period where kids were, you know, dance battling. Um, some that kind of reflects to the past of New York City, where you had, you know, all the violence happening in the 80s, um, like the 70s. Like exactly. or... You saw, you that, know, you saw that, you saw that dance it's culture. It's a different style exactly. and, and, and a, a positive alternative versus just doing things that people see as traditional, also going in untraditional places like the subway, for instance. Exactly. And, and still be in New York. Exactly, and it speaks to um, you know New York City's pastime. And um, just like you see a lot of times with like this new you know, recreation, I wouldn't even say recreation, but like this reincarnation, for lack of words, of like, you know, style. Um, and that was reflective in dance, you know, light feet comes from, you know, uh, break dancing and b-boy, like all of that stuff has happen happened again. And um, I would say Light Feet, as opposed to all these other dance styles that you see, this is one of the most influential dance styles as far as inspiring all these dancing styles down south. And um, for me, that was something that I can re really recollect in my memory of like, this was very influential. And, and I run a different life. Time. Exactly. And that was the time where everybody was dancing. Even if you couldn't dance, you were trying to be like, yo, I want to do it. And it was that <laughs> energy, you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's New York. I mean, that's New York more than any other place. Once you see that energy, that feel good vibe, you want to jump uh, you want to jump in and do it. And um, for me, I was inspired by it. And uh, that's, that's really what inspired this film. And I really wanted to show people, you know, outside of the train, where does this come from? What type of obstacles are these kids experiencing on a daily basis once they leave that train? Mm. Um, so that was that what inspired me. Perfect. What, what are you actually expecting the audience to take away? Because at the end of the day, you know, this is going to be one moment of film. You know, we're not going to jump ahead. Yeah. But I, I see bigger things for you, clearly. But what do you want the audience to take away from this experience today? Um, I would say that, that was a question I was faced with a lot, at a lot of, um, through our festival run. But I would say um, through the experiences that I did have at festivals, everybody could kind of take their own mm -hmm. kind of, um, you know, what they got out of the film. And um, hopefully when y'all see the film, you can see how you can connect to it and a lot of decisions that these kids have to make, how each one of us has to make a decision. And um, you know, depending on which route you want to go, uh, you know, that decision can affect your future and more importantly, your present. So I, that's really what I want everybody to get out of the film. Um, see how you can reflect on it. See what, you know, how you can connect with different characters and some of the experiences that you've had. Thank you, Sean. Our staff. Enjoy the film, thank you. You want to catch you? Yeah, like. 175. How much you got? Like, $2. What you got your tea for? You're going to have to actually swipe. You got to eat today. Hey, you work here? I'm off the clock. Can you just help me and my brother out with a swipe, please? <laughs> your mother let you leave the house with no money. Yes. We just try and get home. Can you please give us a ride? I can't help you. And the trains ain't free. Get some money or walk home. It's like that? Yes, yeah, like that. Uh, me and my bro, dad just need a ride. Dad, grind me. 
Have a good day, young man. That lady just blew mine, yo. I'm about to hop. I don't think that's a good idea, bro. It'd be cops here. There's no police here. We good. Time. What time is it? Time. Here we go, folks. This is the liveest show you have ever seen with the best hype man in the city and the best dancer you have never seen. Let's go. Cop and check how much money we made. That was lit, bro. <laughs> how much is that? I don't even know, but we definitely good for today. I'm not even gonna lie, bro. I'm hungry as hell right now. What you trying to get? I don't know, but we gotta make some type of mood. Something hot. Pizza? Chicken? I tried to keep up with you two from the train. That was one of the best performances I have ever seen. What are you guys' names? I'm Hakeem. This is my brother Darius. It's nice to meet you both. What do you call that style of dancing? It's like ballet meets hip hop. It's called light beat. Light what? Light beat. That was amazing. Listen, I'm an instructor at Juilliard. We are having open auditions for our travel dance team that goes across the country to perform and compete. Emily, right? Yeah. Does he talk? Thanks, but no thanks. I never done no audition before, to be honest. Don't worry. I want you to do your light feet thing. If we can make it, what time should we be there? The auditions are for dancers. If I'm not there, then Darius won't audition. I'll be there, as long as I don't got to pay nothing, right? No, you don't have to pay. Take my number down. and call me when you're there. Okay, you be safe. You too. Did everybody like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, Come on, show some love. You know these black directors, producers need support, man. We out here doing stuff for the community. A lot, a lot of good, interesting parts, you know, that spoke to me particularly. You know, you are gonna, right now I want you to start thinking about the different questions you wanna ask so that you can, you know, have an interactive discussion. So let's just jump straight into it. There were a lot of different moving parts in these scenes here. I'm curious to know from the three of you, of course, what was the most challenging part about shooting this film? I would, um, I mean, I mean, I know Rashid, he was, uh, 
helping me location scout a lot of this. Like he, as my first AD, um, you know, when you're dealing with like a short film and we didn't have a big budget, um, all the money was raised to like people in, our com in my community. Um, Wait, hold on, hold on. We need an applause for that. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens when we come together, you Facts. know? Yeah, it was a big community effort, and um, like I'm thankful for Rashid. Like off the rip, when I told him, I was like, you know, I need a first AD, and um, Rashid never first AD. So like a first AD assistant director, they handle the locations, make sure we're in and out of locations fast. Okay. Um, the directors getting as many shots as they, you know, they want, and um, he tries to make sure, you know, as the first AD, he's my right hand man, mm -hmm. but also he's making sure everything is goes accordingly um, as I wanted to. And um, off the rip, I mean, Rasheed was there location-wise. You know, he went through all the headaches with me, so he could really speak to yeah, that. Yeah, I was going to say, Rasheed, you <laughs> did was, a lot, man. It was a crazy process, the whole, like, every location was crazy. It was all unique in different ways. I think, personally, the hardest scene probably was, like, the train one. Mm -hmm. The train mm -hmm. scenes or the deli scene where you see the, um, the bike. Okay, Because, like, okay. that bike... Like that, we wouldn't plan that. That was a yeah, very, yeah, nah. both of those two scenes, I want to actually um, elaborate a little bit more because two things stuck out to me particularly. I know during the train scene, when it just, everyone, y'all saw where it just slowed down and it was like, like how, to, how the girl from Julia said like, oh, like, what do you do, ballet? And it's like, no, it's lifey. Let's make that clear, right? So I wanted to know, when it had slowed down, I saw right there said things moving. Mm, facts. Well, and that's, and I was, you know, it's the crazy thing. When we shot that, I actually, um, uh, that almost, so we shot that scene and uh, we shot it in, uh, I think it was 120 frames, which means it'll go like more frames so mm -hmm. we can slow it down. But um, that shot right there, my DP, Emily, she, she was amazing. She, she was the camera person for the whole film. Mm -hmm. And um, just as we were about to leave, I was like, all right, cool, I think we got everything. She was like, nope. She's like, you know, remember that shot we talked about? So we rotated the camera and that was like um, her vision. Um, like, I directed everything, but the biggest thing with me, I like to collaborate with other artists. It's a team effort. Exactly. I, I noticed that, and that's how you're here today, because, you know, if no one knows, you know, few do know. It's my I, family here, I, you know? I, I, I love Sean. Like, I've been watching just like everyone else, and I've been, I actually came out to Lincoln Center. That was my first time I got a chance to see the film. And in that moment, I knew, I was like, yo, we have something here, and I'm I, glad to call you a son of Harlem, I, and to be, you know, as the director said earlier, just be doing such good work so that people can see, you know, a, a proof of concept exactly. and be able to have something to get money to put towards. Sure. So exactly. often people come, with a, come to us with nothing already made. You went and you teamed up, you found the different moving parts to exactly. make this vision come to reality. So no, fast. thank you. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank and to you. like just, just finish up on that, that question, I would say like, you know, as a, a first AD, it was kind of my job to make sure Sean stays just creating and not mm. worrying about things going on on set. But it was hard for me because like I want to see the creative part too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like Sean would get like, "Yo, bro, go get them." Like, uh -huh, make uh -huh. sure. So it was like it was a experience for me to learn like how to you know manage people and make sure everyone is good, everyone is where they're supposed to be, but as well learn some of the directing things going on. So you it was like, definitely a great experience. You know the VP. We ain't gonna talk about the one that's in there right now, but <laughs> usually a VP and any president, I mean, in any company, doesn't really get all of the credit, so I already know. It's like you behind the scene and you gotta be that first point, that first hand of contact with all of the actors mm -hmm. and with Sean. Then there's miscommunication with scheduling or with location. It's exactly. all types of things that could go wrong, you know what I mean? Exactly. So definitely, <laughs> thank, thank you for, for dealing with the chaos. <laughs> so, for sure, and I would say like, we shot that whole film, um, budget wise it was tough. I mean, we, we dealt with like a $5,000 budget and then, you know, shooting a film, that's not a lot of money. I mean, trying to get, I mean, we had what, 21 locations mm -hmm. over three days. So like to get to, you know, seven places a day is like, that's, you know, unheard of in film. So the biggest thing was like shooting a guerrilla style, that's what they call it, without permits, um, not really blocking off blocks. We had to go through a lot of stuff, trying to move around different people, different noises. Um, noises. Noises. Reed, you produced the yeah. music, right? Yeah. I had the, how's it going, everybody? My name is Rico. I had the honor of serving um, Sean by producing some of the tracks for his life. Yeah. Uh, so, so the music, it just definitely always complimented and made us know where we were at. So one thing, if you know anything about... Sure. Um, you know, the five senses, 
music plays a huge Absolutely. component to Absolutely. create a vibe, you know? Absolutely. So as, as an artist, as a musician outside of here, you know, we wear multiple hats. Of course. I want to know what was some of the inspiration behind your music compositions? Max. I was brought up in the Bronx. I was brought up in the South Bronx, uh, specifically. So that was just mm. what I know. You so know what wait, I mean? hold on, like, hold on. Remember, you didn't get to the second one, the Zulu Nation. That's what I was gonna say. Oh, you peeped it. I peeped that. <laughs> Y'all thought I ain't see that, huh? <laughs> so the South Bronx. We got some South Bronx representatives in here. Yes. Yeah, All right, I know that from my mom. You know. Sure. Um, Gospel Gwen right there, thank you. My <laughs> aunt right here, you know my dad, they spent their years, I know, wow. I just came from being up on Fordham Road and they trying to change it, mind you. So, continue. Yeah, no, that, um, I was just trying to stick to the essence of what the, the sound comes from. Mm. Um, so I guess, I wasn't on set, I wasn't with the production side, so I guess my challenge was making sure that I had a track for Sean that really spoke to what um, we we're trying to convey with this group of this community um, the struggle, the trials, and the tribulation that comes from the rawness of being from the South Bronx. So the challenge as a producer was to really take the sounds of New York City, um, the claps, the haze, mm. the, the different vocalizations, mm. the utterations that we hear on a day to day, and right. compose that into something that could speak to the storyline that Sean is conveying. For sure. And I would even say, like, you talk about like the relationship between like the South Bronx and Harlem. That's always been, you know, it's a small bridge that mm -hmm. connects us. Oh, yeah. You know, it's a quick, what, a walk, five minute yeah. walk. So, like, <laughs> right. the South Bronx and Harlem always had, like, this connection in a sense between yeah. music, fashion, culture. It's sure. always been very connected. Yeah. And even sure. with Light Feet, like, you know, Harlem was getting light. What they used to call South it during that time, a lot of people don't know this, but um, you know the connection, HBO. And <laughs> hey, look, Showtime, come on, we get, we're going somewhere with and, this. And, you always, and that's always been a connection. So, even like Reek talking about, like, you know, being from the South Bronx, same, same, some of the stuff he could relate to growing up um, can sure. relate to me as like a Harlem native and everybody. It's here from the Bronx. Yeah, <laughs> you could probably speak to it as well. Like, you see all, you know, it's very similar mm -hmm. style wise, thing, music yeah. wise. You know, there's some cultural differences, but it's all relatively the same. Um, so, yeah, even like Reek, um, like he said, he came, he wasn't a part of the production side. So, like, a lot of times with film, you got, you know, the pre production where you're working on developing the script and then you're working on putting together a team. Then you got the production side where you're actually shooting the film. And then you have post production, which you go into like editing everything, mm -hmm. putting together the different sounds. Um, um, even recreating the story. I know our film, we probably edited that, I don't even know, it might have been like 20, 30, maybe 30 edits of the storyline of the storyline through, you know, after we already filmed it. So how did you create a character like Hakeem, for instance? Facts. Because um, he's very interesting. Facts. Uh, the biggest thing I really um, wanted not only to showcase, you know, the light feet mm -hmm. dances, also, you know, it's that style of like, all right, when they dance on the train, it's somebody that usually takes the lead, the hype person. Mm -hmm. um, how do they bring in people to get the money? Mm -hmm. And usually, um, you know, the hype person has that energy. That's who they are. So they usually take the lead for, as far as that, getting the money, getting the crowd into things. And um, the biggest thing with Hakeem, I wanted him to kind of reflect somebody from Harlem, that kind of mm -hmm. hustler mentality. You know, and unfortunately, a lot of times, a lot of people I know that had the hustler mentality at a point, they make a decision best for what's money wise mm. instead of passion. So that was kind of the decision he made. You know, he saw the passion for him was more so like, I, right, I like getting people involved. Like, I'm the reason you got the audition, as you mm, heard him say. Exactly. Without me, you would have never got that. So that was his kind of role in that relationship. But unfortunately, once he's seen himself being distanced, like, all right, cool, um, Darius is going for his audition. You know, I got to do what's best for me. And, that's his hustle, so I'm gonna make my decisions on that. And um, so yeah, his character was kind of molded around that. And I could honestly say, like, for me personally, I knew a tons of people like that. Um, and hopefully, y'all know some people like I right, cool. They after the money instead of the passion. And um, willing to smoke with you in the staircase, but not come to the screener. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's real. And you see, you just, and that's what exactly happened. And that was the biggest thing, like with a Hakeem. You kind of like with storytelling, you want to have different characters, and. Um, First, he's kind of started off, you know, as one of the leads in a sense, and then he turned into kind of the antagonist. Mm. And kind of like, you've seen like where a, it kind like of Almost like an op. Exactly. You've seen the transition, and that's where his character really came from. Um, and that was another thing I really wanted to compliment Joel. The, he was the lead dancer, Darius, with the dreads. Mm -hmm. That was his first time acting. Speaking of Darius, um, where is he right now? He's in London right now. Okay. So he's, he's actually in London. Um, he, he's been dancing for years, and it's just a credit to, like, you know, just like, this is really his story. Um, I created the story, but 
through like God and just the universe, it connect it aligned perfectly. Like him acting out this role, this is stuff he actually experienced. And for him now, you know, even in the movie, he had to make that decision, you know, whether he went to the audition or not, that's up to y'all. But now he just kept dancing, persevering. And you know, after we filmed the movie, he ended up on Ellen doing Nike commercials. Wow. Um, he's in London right now. He was just in France a couple weeks ago. And that's that kind of perseverance I'm speaking about. And even with Light Feet dancing, um, you know, you barely see any more Light Feet dancers. But we all knew some. You know, now they're doing whatever they're doing now, you know, whether it's, you know, career wise or life, starting families now. But um, you know, the ones that stuck with it now that, you know, they're wreaking, you know, all the benefits of their hard work. And um, yeah, so like that that really spoke to Joel and all the hard work he's been doing. Um, he's talented. I mean, that's his first time acting. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really wanted to pair him up that's with great. like some real dope actors and Dimitri, uh, Dimitri Carter, he played Hakeem. Mm-hmm. He was, you know, him and Joel embraced each other. They became brothers <laughs> on set, literally. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, it helped Joel help him get out of, you know, get out of his little shyness to start off. And uh, you know, he opened up, you know, and uh, I, I think he did a great job acting out that role for sure, both of them. Um, Definitely. So I wanna open it up to the audience at this point. It is a Q and A. Um, does anyone want to start off particularly? Uh, I'll take the first. All right, so I'm going to start right here. Sauda. Well, um, it's not exactly a question. I just want to say. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you want to go? Yeah. Oh, you could. Wait, watch. Yeah, you could. Oh, stay there? OK. okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, we could. Stay there? OK. Come on up to the mic. All right, I'm going to turn it towards the audience. No, turn Oh, no, keep this. Oh, I'm sorry. Gotcha. There you go. Come on. I'm sorry. Well, it's not exactly a um, question. I just wanted to say that this short film speaks true to a lot of, not just Joel was that yeah, thing. Mm-hmm. I have so many, and, and it's weird growing up and seeing our life become movies and stuff like that. Mm. Because I firsthand was on the trains with my friends while they were getting late and it was hitting. Is what they call mm. it. They hit the trains yeah, yeah. to hit make the their train. money. And we would oh, all yeah. stop on Union Square it's, and go to Wendy's and get our food and everything. Uh-huh. So it's funny to see how, like, it really helped all of my friends. Mm. All of my friends who start, stayed true to who they were and stuck true to the to the light feed. I have friends that are in China, friends that are in Japan, that friends that are in Europe touring, doing dancing. I have friends that stayed here and are teaching dancing to little kids. Mm. Like, it, 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 so it's moving to see things like this. Mm. Because it is that, you know, a lot of my friends grew up in Brooklyn. Yeah. And it, <laughs> to see that, like, hustle or be hustled kind of lifestyle, they were given a different alternative and everything, so they mm. was able to get past that. So seeing it in a movie is actually really, really crazy. But it's actually, I, I, I'm, I'm very happy with this work. Like I, I, I think it's a really good um, short film. Do, do you have any question particularly? No, I just wanted to say that. I just wanted to express. <laughs> <my heart. laughs> I, I really wanted to Can I speak because to the whole time I'm watching it, I was saying like, wow, like this is Richie's story. This is mm. Slick story. So you see a lot this of people in it. Yeah. This is literally Solo. everybody's story. Mm-hmm. And, and these are those, do, those are life feet legends and those legends. Are that, like those and, and those are close friends of mine and everything. This is all of this. This is the actual story of life feet. It's amazing. I think um, I, I want to speak to what she's saying. Um, yeah, amazing. I think you do an amazing job juxtaposing. Like we, we had, there's these two worlds in the film. I feel there's the world of Juilliard, the mm-hmm. world of classical music, the ballet, mm-hmm. and you have this raw, light feet, hopping a train, hood, stoops. <laughs> I love how you bridge those two worlds. I think she speaks to that. Um, in that, in doing so, you let a lot of little kids from the South Bronx who are dancing to let them know that those two worlds aren't that much far from each other. You know what I mean? They're literally it's a possible. train ride. It's achievable. It's a train ride away. It's it. it's yeah. But people don't see that. And another thing I saw symbolic wise was like the rat was going in the opposite directions of the train tracks. Mm. <laughs> what, what was that about? Because <laughs> nah, everything in the film is particular. Yeah, nah. It was, and I was like a lot of stuff, like I just speak like to my team. They bought into the vision. When, when I first was coming up with the idea, my producer, Coors, he's, he's, we were in L.A. when we were com- I was coming up with the idea for the film. Mm-hmm. But um, he lives in Atlanta now, but we were, everybody bought into the vision. I was like, yo, I got this idea for a film. I wrote out the script, and everybody bought in. And then along the way, like that shot right there, my DP, Emily, we got off the train after we were shooting the Lincoln Center scene, and it was a whole bunch of rats in the train. And we were like, and it was about like 2 a.m. And I was like, yo, Emily, you got the camera, right? Like, yo, take out the camera. Let's just start rolling the camera. 
and we started getting the rats and we we're like yo this could be b-roll which is like footage we could use later and we were like yo this is like stuff you know even even the little things like that those were kind of like signs like all right cool let's grab it and everything i'll not tell you like and i i, I swear like everything came together in a way like you know, this is happening for a reason. It, like, Rashid could even talk about, like, the dirt bike scene that you guys seen. Like, that wasn't scripted. Like, we, it just you know, happened. it happened. Because I called my boy, uh, Troy, and he's a, you know, you know you know about, like, dirt bike lifestyle in Harlem and, you know, mm -hmm. even in the city. A legend in his own right. Exactly. Shout out to my man's ASAP Press. You know, I got on some dirt bike, biker exactly. style sneakers from Supra. Yeah. Um, you know, so... Definitely. And you talk, I, I, yeah, I you know about the bike life in Harlem is just as, you know, influential as the light fee style. And these are things that I saw. So I called him that morning. I was like, yo, we need some extras for a film if you're around. And he said he would pull up. So right before we were about to shoot the scene, we didn't see him. And then all, right, literally a minute before wow. we were about to start the camera rolling, okay. we had dirt bike riding. <laughs> we were like, all right, here he is. And then we was like, we didn't even like, um, I didn't block anything to show where the actor's going to be. I was like, you know what? Let's get you rolling down the block and let's just get it on camera. And, um... You know, Rasheed, you know, he could talk about, like, all of that stuff came together like, just like. Like, even, um, I remember, I don't think Sean even knows this story. I don't remember if I told him or not. <laughs> we were going to the scene, like, even during we were watching it. So the deli that, the Harlem deli, you guys seen it said the West Harlem deli, right? The interior is in the Bronx. Mm. Like, the inside of wow. it is not the Harlem deli. Was, Wait so, you say something about that. <laughs> so we had deli, but not the interior. So it was, we went to the deli, and, and sh I don't think Sean liked it. Like, it, it kind of was too small, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we went to the Bronx to shoot the inside, but I was watching it. Every time I watch, I'm like, wow, you, like, did that so well on the storytelling. Because if someone's not from Harlem, they'll think that's the inside of it. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that's so, movie magic. Like, yep. you know, you find exteriors and you try to find ways to, like, put it together and, like... I know y'all got questions. Hold on. We're going to take a few more questions. Um, Some of us knew that about that deli. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm going to take I'm gonna oh, right. a question. Ask a question. Go ahead. Please introduce yourself and... Hi, I'm Gospel Gwen. <laughs> I am the mother of masters. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Sean is family. And uh, I'm just so, I don't like to use the word proud, but I'm honored that we're having our seeds, our children come up being so proactive, responsible, and um, just seeing you guys blossom into the men that you are, you know what I mean, um, gives us hope for the future. So my question is, what I saw as a mother was two siblings mm. possibly going on divergent paths. Mm. So I want to say, does any of what was reflected in the film Showtime make you aware of your interactions with your siblings or close cousins or family members and does that allow for you to take a lesson from it where you might be able to help someone that may be on a divergent path? Mm, nice. great wow, question. That's a great question. Great question. Right. Good. Um, I would say as an artist, you always, your art is a reflection of like your reality. Of course. So I would say, you know, I have two brothers. And a lot of times, you know, I learned from my big brother. A lot of yeah. this, you know, the good things he did and a lot of the bad things Stony he did. Stoney McCloud, that's my yeah. big cousin too. <laughs> <laughs> so all of the things, you know, like that my brother did, good or bad, I learned from. So you look at like the brother dynamics and families, you know, whether you're the older brother or the younger brother, you're learning constantly from each other. You know, some might make a good decision and some might make a bad, you know, a bad decision. And, you know, just naturally you're going different ways. And um, I felt that was something that not only I could relate to, but also everyone could relate mm -hmm. to in a family dynamic. And you know, you as a mother, you can speak to that too, probably as from your children. You see different, you know, as children come into their own, especially young black men, you see which ways they start to go, especially at an age once they start trying to make decisions on their own. And um, yeah, I would definitely say that's reflective of my experiences, but um, it was also just seeing that in other families and in other people's family dynamics as well. And I think that, that was a great question, actually. <laughs> Thank um, you for that. It even goes farther than family, too, and more like with friends, I'll see it's a bigger problem because it's like you will have friends where 
you know, they take your advice, but they won't tell you that, you know, they look for your advice. So I, I've seen that in the film a lot where they needed each other's advice, but he wanted to be the dancer, but he wouldn't really tell his, you know, his brother that he would love to get his shine too. So, you know, you heard him say a line like, oh, you're the dancer, I'm not, you don't need me, you know what I'm saying? So it's like different people in life, they have friends where your friends might need you more than you think. So you have to be the bigger person and know like, yeah, if my friend might need me, I'm gonna throw my pride to the side and reach out and help this person if you know they're trying to go a different path. That's a fact. And even beyond that, like one of my boys, um, Nadir, he was like our set photographer. He was in a couple scenes. He's been doing a lot of social media stuff. But he said, uh, and this, we were in LA a couple, uh, a couple months ago, and he said, yo, the biggest thing, especially in life, a lot of people don't know how to play their roles. And that's a very important thing that like, as I'm getting older, that's a big thing that is constantly just, I've been thinking about it and it flashes across my mind. It's like, you know, it might not be your time right now, but like you stay the course to help your friend out, then there's gonna come a moment where, you know, hopefully it can hopefully come back towards you and hopefully they can do for you. And that's a very important thing. Everybody is so, you know, we live in an individualistic society. Everybody wants to do it on their own. They don't really want to do for others. And um, I would say that's another thing. It's like, you know, sometimes you gotta take the back seat because it's your friend's time. And when it's your moment, you know, hopefully they do the same for you. But a lot of times you got to understand, like, this is their moment and I got to take the back seat. Yeah. And that's a nice. big thing. You see a lot of it, like, you know, it's been a lot of times, even New York City is probably one of the most, you know, individualistic places. It's super competitive. And, it, you know, a lot of times it doesn't have to be that way. It's great that it is, but, you know, it can be so destructive also. And that's another thing, like, that you, I hope y'all got from that, too. Like, you know, maybe he could have just been like, all right, cool, you go to the audition, I'm going to hold it down, and then, you know, yeah. I'm going to be there to support to go, you. The conversation have to be that way. Exactly. To, to just use, like, something that, like, a peace pipe, like, you know, in, in certain cultures, marijuana or whatever the case may be, right? That could be a building block, right? Yeah. But instead he used it as a divisive block. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, um, you know, I want to turn it back to the audience. Do you have any question? And um, just <laughs> so many, so many different points of just great cinema. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Ish. I'm from the Bronx. I'm 23. So um, I can't really speak. Just like, so I speak away. No, uh, I, no, 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 I have to. All right. Um, I kind of appreciated first the length of the film, just it being about 15, 20 minutes, because I feel like artistically nowadays less is more, and it just applied differently for everybody in this room, where you don't have to be the 21 year old kid who actually lived through this to understand. You could be the 50 year old passerby who's in a train just watching these kids go by. Maybe that's what you took away from it. But the way it was shot, it was just so many different effects as far as like even the twirling in the train because that thing it kind of reminded me of like a lot of worlds in a way. Mm, exactly. You've seen where everybody was from, and you just, nobody really knows about these kids, nobody wants to inquire about them. You're just trying to get them out your face for so a you have quick question. So, I got a question. Um, because I actually came up, <laughs> now I came, I came up in everyone this loves the film. Yeah, yeah. I just want you to add yeah, no, Sean no, is here. Yeah. Um, this is a busy man, he really yeah, took time that's cool, out. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. So, it's an actual question because I remember being in middle school and actually like living in this and seeing what goes behind life because we think of life we think of just dancing but there was also people who were recording them people who were making mm -hmm. songs for this people who was putting it up on the internet this is yeah. the blow up on the internet so you kind of seen where certain people maybe like all four of you guys seen where it was going but not everybody seen how it blow up and how you know so you kind of seen that diversion not only with brothers but with friends with people if you was playing ball or getting light or doing that you kind of seen the difference so mm. how did you guys stick to your individuality and not go into the peer pressure you know because people a lot it kind of split it into like joining gangs as you yeah. said where everybody was literally playing ball and dancing and like, i want to say oh nine ten just yeah. everything just split off so wow, how did it. you guys click in and say all right i could be individual and stay to it and how do you guys let your immediate peers know or make that I, I would say like in my neighborhood you still see it like I grew up like another just a quick note a lot of the all the music there was from people that I grew up with from my neighborhood so all the music um the rappers and all that they live right around the corner from me mm -hmm. um but I would say like it's always been a thing is like decision I would say football helped me personally Football was one of those things, like, instead of being a lot, like, I was outside a lot, mm -hmm. but also, like, I, like as I got older, I started putting my effort and energy more into sports. Mm -hmm. 
So for a lot of you know inner city kids, sports is that outlet to try to get us off, and that's always that's a big thing, and I, that's one of the amazing things about sports. But for me personally, it was sports um, that kept me out of that path of more the street life and everything. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah so it was sports too for me. But even to touch on something you said, um, I watched that like the evolution of like light feet change from years because I used to dance myself. Right. You know, I had the time create my own Adidas when mm -hmm. used to color yeah, on yeah, Adidas. Yeah get the knee pads, right. you know, I used to like watch kick Put pack all videos that, uh -huh. all day. Like that was like, I didn't do my homework to study that. <laughs> like my mom used to be like, do your homework and not watch those videos. But honestly, I love the story when Sean told me what he wanted to do. I loved it because it showed how when we were little, we wanted to dance for kind of like popularity. Now it's for money, you know what I'm saying? It's for these kids to pay their bills and you know, keep their phone bill on to get food in their stomach. It's not, that's why they have to go on the train. So like, I'll see people be on the train and I'll be like, damn, like they're about to kick somebody or something, but they really like take their dancing so serious that they'll right. make sure they, they put on a good show. Mm. Yeah, I know you yeah. From the music production perspective, I would say there's nothing like seeing a dancer dance to one of my tracks. Like it's just an amazing feeling for me. Mm -hmm. um, and not even on some like selfish, uh, you know, way, but like <laughs> just the fact that I can take these raw elements and hip hop you and, know, and, and fluid someone components. to the point where that they want to get up and dance. That's yeah. just such, such a powerful thing for me. Um, so I would say I spent a lot of time indoors because you know I was producing. But to see the outcome of what I'm doing to my, for my community was always amazing and special for me. Kind of kept me going. I have a follow up question real yeah. quick. I don't know the uh, divergent character's name, the one who was going to the streets more. Yeah. But um, you know, every hood has one of those, or at least five. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, how do we kind of get I those can. people to understand that you may not have to be on the front line? You may not be the rapper artist. You may not be the dancer. You may not be. But there's other positions around where you know, if you find your specialty, you could be a road manager. You could exactly. be a security guard. Exactly. You could be an A and R. Master. You could be a producer. Like, how could we get those type of you know thoughts and resources into those? Type people instead of just saying you know if you don't fill this box then you're completely. Yes, I, I think it's always a thing is like they gotta see the vision. So like you know a lot of times it'd be like all right they should have done this. Like, a lot of times they didn't get the chance to see that. Right. So like I'll say now you know you got social media so you see like especially like you talk about like a boogie he's an up and coming rapper from the Bronx. Um, but his whole team is people he came up with. They all took their roles, like, all right, cool. I'm going to be the one that handles, you know, the management. Exactly. You know, I'm going to be the A&R. Like, once you, people start to see that, then they're like, all right, cool. I can do that, too. And that's mm -hmm. the biggest thing. At, during that time, like, Life Feet, it was no, so, I mean, social media was there. You know, you had Facebook. It was just started. Yeah, but it wasn't just like now it is, you know, people getting deals off of Instagram videos. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, it's real. Really, and I yeah. say a lot of kids... They didn't really have those kinds of outlets and stuff like that, so. And and to touch on that, because I'm I'm also an A and R as well, so I, like I have my own management team, and it, this could go with life too. If you don't have a team, like you won't reach far, you know what I'm saying? So I seen a quote on Facebook, and I just want to like put it to the world, like believe in your friend. It, the quote was, invest in your friends; they might make your dreams come true. Mm. And I and I took that like, I took that to heart because it's like if you can play your role and put your time and your effort and creativity into one of your friends, he might make what you want to do become possible, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like if you do that and you know help your friends or help your family, it might make you do something that you want to do. 